to be at the background for the HSBC advert on a billboard, that's when you're suddenly getting 50 grand for the day instead of a few okay. hundred. Hey, today's video is very different. I've not done this before. This is me helping a photographer fix his business. And today we've got Gary. Gary's an interiors photographer and I'm trying to help him get from being that jobbing photographer who's struggling to a high-end photographer. He has the skills, but he doesn't have the network. So I'm going to help him through that. This is the conversation we had, which helped him get from here to knowing what to do over here. And hopefully you can take something from this as well. And it'll be something which can help you go, oh yes, I can relate to that. That, that is true. I, I do that sometimes. Maybe I need to do more of this. Now, if you do need more help with your photography business, I do have a link below where you can book in a one-to-one -one call. These are sort of like two-hour sessions where we really get down to the nitty-gritty and really try and point you in the right direction. Okay, so we've got Gary with us today, and Gary is an, an interior photographer, predominantly. Yeah. Mm. And he's based near Essex in... Um, Dagenham. Dagenham. And um, I know I was going to mess that up. So we're going to have a look at his work and try and work out what it is he needs to do in order to get to the next stage in his career. So... How long have you been doing this for? I've been doing it approximately like five years. Five years. And how long has it been your sole form of income? Um, the whole five years. The whole um, five years? Uh, yeah. How long were you doing photography for before? Uh, about 10 years. Ten, was, oh, okay. Yeah, I'd done a wedding photography for six years and then there was a, a crossover period into um, property. Into property, brilliant. What's the reason why you've chosen to do property? Because I've got your website here, just having a quick look through it. Um, well, someone just asked me to shoot um, their property. And then, so I just realized that the, the style that of property photography, the slower pace of it, it suited my personality more. Yep, but yeah, so very similar thing. I did portraits, weddings, and then yeah. went, this, this is not for me. Um, discovered still life was for me. So you're making a full-time living from it. Yeah. It's going well. Yeah. What is it that you want to be doing that you're not doing at the moment? What's that gap between where you are now and where you want to be? I think it's um, the amount that I'm working and it, it's, it's like I have to constantly be working to, to make sure that the money's going to be coming in. And I'd rather do um, more interesting and, and bigger projects and do less of them and have more free time to to do other, other, other bits and pieces yeah yeah, yeah no, absolutely it. so what, what's your current like what's your average day rate at the moment if you're going to do like a shoot for a property how much do you roughly charge for that um so it, it's between 70 and 150 pound so you're doing a lot of shoots then um well, well it varies because I, I work for an agency as well right um and that's like a lower rate but i don't have to do none of that the editing um, I just sort of shoot for them and send it to them. Shooting and that's like, brilliant. Yeah. So how many shoots are you doing a week? Uh, maybe it's about maybe four, four a day. Um, so yeah, about, about 20. Wow. So cause I'm looking at your work and the work's really high quality and I'm shocked at then how much you're shooting. Um, so to put it into context, I've shot once this month. Um, and that, <laughs> we have a difference, yeah. and that I'd, I'd imagine, but with the greatest respect, I'd imagine I've made more money this month than you're doing in a year. So obviously, what you're doing is great because the work's good, and usually the problem is the work's not good enough, and that's why. But your work's yeah. good enough, but you're underselling yourself, and you're shooting for the wrong people. Yeah. Um, you also need to change your portfolio. So as I'm just going through this here, okay. your work is better than it should be for the people you're shooting for but it's the wrong work for the people you need to be shooting for if that makes sense so the people who are getting you at the moment are getting a really good deal, good deal yeah like they're <laughs> they wonder they're so busy they're like this is brilliant to, to be fair I, I kind of know that but um to get away from who i'm shooting for to get to shoot for the people i need to it's, it kind of clashes. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't want to upset the people I'm working for because if they then suddenly say, okay, I will find somebody else, then I've lost out on quite a lot for the one or two new jobs that yeah. I currently would have. So at the moment, you're doing the equivalent of a food photographer's restaurant photography. Like you're doing the okay. like, it's the, the high volume, low price, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and everything looks kind of the same. So when I'm going through your portfolio, the rooms are different. They're very nice rooms. You're very lucky to have got that. Like some of these rooms you've shot, it's very good because like they, they just look good. Like you can photograph a rubbish room really well and it's never going to look as well as a good right. room photograph well. So that's really good. 
but you've got the same shot every single time. Like every photograph is the same photograph. Okay. So, and that's what they want. And the price you're charging for that is the right price for what they need. Like they don't have budget to spend more on interior photography. You're not gonna be able to turn them into like two grand a day clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you need to do is shoot a new portfolio um, right. of interior work, which doesn't look like this. So the really high end interior photographers and those who work in that sort of world, they all have a specific style of work that they do. Okay. So some of them will be really known for their inclusion of people within their work or their inclusion of movement within a still space. So whether it's like they've always got a wind away from with a curtain blowing. Okay. Like some, like oh, something right. like, yeah. there, there'll always be this like little thing which is like, That's that their work, work is always quite pastely. Their work is always, you know, it's always shot in a, in a way that the perspectives are off, but they work within the building's context. Right. So it's that like deeper understanding of the building itself and the interior. Whereas these shots are pretty shots of what's there. Rather than right. an artistic interpretation, you're getting paid to go, let other people know what this room looks like. Right. And you're doing a good job of that. You're going, yes, here it is. Here's a nice wide shot. The lines are straight. Everything's well exposed. Everything's lit. You can see everything nicely. The styling's really good. Everything's like, everything's where it should be, but there's no creativity in the photograph because these clients don't allow for that because that's not what they want. They just want to have, this is exactly what it is. Right. So to get those higher paying clients, you need to go away and do a lot of research into like top interior photographers, because when someone like HSBC build a new building for like one and a half billion, and they want it documenting for the architectural firm, that's when they want somebody who understands the building and can create images that portray the interior designers and the architects vision of that, rather than just going, here's the HSBC bank. Right, right. So it's trying to find that like slightly different approach to it. So there's an HSBC bank in Hong Kong, I think it is, where all of the like, you know the pipes and the electrics and the air vents they're all on the outside of the building. Okay. Now loads of people go and photograph it because it looks really cool. Yeah. And they all take like a perfect picture, perfect straight lines, perfectly exposed, beautiful sky. Here's the HSBC bank. Yeah. But what they're not doing is going. Here's a way to photograph it in the same style that the architects and designers to plan to have it like plan to build it and design it they're just going here is a matter of fact picture same as like when you shoot for like a big food campaign if you do mcdonald's there's two shoots you do there's the advert which is a creative shoot and then there's the picture of the big mac which goes above the thing the um, right right right, the right right these are the picture above the till these are like the this is what you're getting okay and to get the bigger money you need to be doing the here's an interpretation of it if that makes sense Right. So it's a more creative way of shooting the spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Now, with interior photography, it's a bit more limiting. So you can find a way to pull in some architecture to go alongside it. So the exteriors of these buildings and the interiors. So you've got a bit of a... A mix. A mix, because I know a few interior photographers, um, and they don't make that much money because... The, the people who've made these big buildings don't want to deal with two photographers. If they can get one person who can do outside and inside at a really high standard, they'll do that rather than going, get we'll get you to do the inside, you to do the outside, please make your work look the same yeah, and yeah, hope yeah. that it works as a unified. Okay. Like, because a, a lot of these, like, these massive buildings, and you think like, if you start a company, why do you spend one and a half billion on a building? Um, one is for tax reasons. And the other is having an iconic building is important for business it's important for showing people who you are so my agent's based in the t building in shoreditch okay um, which is like a very iconic creative building yeah she could be based anywhere she could be based above starbucks but that doesn't give the same vibe as being in the t building so right. these things right. matter which is why they pay so much money to have it photographed so when they send their brochure out to their shareholders they're like and here's the new building we made okay um and, and there's other things you can look at as well. So years ago, when I used to work with people, I shot the members of staff for a, a business in Leicester, actually. And they make the furniture for the palaces around the world. So if okay. you need a skirting board, they build the tool to cut the wood for the skirting board. They oh. keep that tool, and it'd be called such and such palaces skirting board for room seven. Yeah. They go and install it, and then they want perfect photographs of that with like a, a really high-end premium look because the clients that they are going to be getting in want to see what it's been done like and they want to see 
rather than just here is skirting board, they also pay someone else to go, here's some really creative shots of this room in use. Here it is okay. like being lived in here. Like, so they can yeah. really sell the, the dream of what it is that these people are buying into. The lifestyle of it. Absolutely. Of, of so obviously like people selling houses is a really easy one to go, well, if I want to do interior photography, people sell houses, I photograph that. But there's a lot more of like different ways that people need to sell the inside of a building, whether it's to their shareholders from a property they've purchased, whether it's um, the people who make the furniture needing to show it, um, people who design bars. Okay. They want like beautiful pictures, their bars in use, showing how the room flows. Right, right, Like right. explaining to people, like if you hire us to create your bar, we'll make sure that you don't end up with it being four deep at the bar. And here's a picture of a packed room explaining how it works. And there's all these different like potential clients who aren't just people selling houses. Yeah, okay. So, you know, there's quite a few bits in there that you can look at. So, um, so would it be useful for, well, it would be useful for me to ask um, the client, like, who are you sending this to? And like, who do you want to see this kind of thing? Yeah, I think so. And I think a, another way to look at it would be to go, let's look around my local area. Who's making furniture? Who's making, like, I don't know what the name for it is, but like, who, who designs the wallpaper? Okay. Who does this? Like, because um, if there's a place that like Hackney and Co have just designed for the interiors, they're going to want images of it. Like, and it right. won't be super high paying, but it'll be more high paying than this. Okay. Um, and on the flip side, like, if someone like Hewlett Packard build a new monster office with like, you know, 500 stories high and all the rest of it, they will pay good money to have that photograph. But obviously these huge buildings, they don't go up that often. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so okay, they're like, okay. it's, it's a very different industry to food. So like in the food industry, I can just go, well, I'm just gonna do these big jobs because there's plenty of them. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. in interiors, from what I know, which is not, I'm not an expert in interiors by any stretch of the imagination, but from the people I know who shoot it, the clientele and the workload is quite varied. So they will do some editorial work for magazines. There's loads of interior magazines and architecture yeah, yeah. magazines. Um, and I'm clumping interiors and architecture together, the different things, but I think it's that two one, things you can do yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's no reason why you, if you can master one, you can't master the other. It's not like doing portraits and interiors, which are like completely, completely random. different. Yeah, I see. So they do a bit of that editorial work. They do some commercial work for big clients. They'll do some work for ad agencies because some of what they'll do is almost event work. So for example, Smirnoff will have like some huge music festival they're sponsoring and they'll get hired not to photograph the festival, but to photograph the stands that are put up by Smirnoff in the context of the festival. Okay. So Smirnoff can at the end of your report go, here's what we did. Or when they're pitching to another client, so the ad agency were like, can you document this for us? So we can go, here's what we did for this brand. Here is it in action. And there'll be certain things they want to show about that, like um, motor racing circuits always have sponsors there. Right, they have like right. the little tent, like the Red Bull tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that Red Bull tent needs photographing. Okay. And it could easily land onto an architectural photographer to do that, more so than a portrait photographer. Right, like, yeah, or, yeah like, I see. At a very low level, they'll just get an event person and go, can you get a picture of the tent? But when it's like a huge advert, like a, a deal, huge yeah. thing, they want someone in there who can do a a really perfect job, nail it, and give them an image which their client can look at and go, yes, we can make this work for this, this, and this. Okay. Um, there's quite a lot of scope in there, and it's just pitching portfolios to the right places. Yeah. So, because at the moment, it's very much like I photograph rooms. To be, to be fair, I think it, well, it looks exactly like that because it is real estate, and that's what yeah. they've wanted, and that's what they've always, so I, I've sort of, um, as I've uh, grown, and, and developed, I guess, my, a style. It's been for real estate agents. And so then I'm a photograph in the room to look nice and everything yep. to look good because that is what they want. And that's all I've kind of known of interior, interior and uh, property photos. Yeah, so and, it, it and I think you've done a really sense. good job of it. So I think what I would do, so obviously you need to stick to the reality of you have to pay your bills, is continue doing what you're doing don't stop any of that. Yeah. Like keep doing that. And then on your days off, you need to be working on a new body of work. Okay. So say you get two days off a week, like might be in random bits, like half day here, half day there. Yeah. So you've got yeah. two days off. 
one day we'll be researching the top interior photographers in the world, and the top architectural photographers in the world, and seeing, you know, what they are, who they are. They go to the yeah. AAP website, go to find a photographer. Yeah. Go, go to architecture, go to interior design, go to landscape, because they're all similar skill sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To see who these people are, which agents represent them in London, okay. and who they're shooting for. And that'll give you some ideas as to how you can apply the images to commercial gain. Because right. that's when you get to start charging usage. Like when, yeah, yeah, when yeah. somebody goes, oh, we need a picture of our new bank to be at the background for the HSBC advert on a billboard, that's when you're suddenly getting 50 grand for the day instead of a few okay. hundred. And that's obviously what you want to be doing. But to get there, you need to build a body of work that looks like you yeah. do that. Okay. Um, so you need to be shooting images which will be like the billboards you see, like the advert you see. And when you drive around, you'll notice the billboards. Loads of them have cityscapes as backgrounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like loads of them have buildings in the background, just like, and then text on front, in the front of it. Like there's a lot of that sort of stuff. A lot of bank adverts have a shot inside a bank, bank branch. Yeah, like yeah. And then HSBC someone years smiling. Had it, and, yeah, handing yeah, out a yeah. pamphlet. That could be you do that. But there's no reason why you can't be the person who goes in, gets that perfectly level shot, shoots it for the ad agency, and then collects much more money. Right. Rather than working four shoots a day. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, so it makes sense. A lot of it's about context and just finding that correct application for your work. So if it was me, I'd go, right, carry on what I'm doing because it's working, I'm making money. I don't have to go and work in an office, which is always good. Yeah, yeah. That's and then go, class. right, two days a week, one day's research, learning who else is in the field and what they do, learning about the industry of that work, learning about the, the styles and the different ways they do it. And the other part is going out and doing it. Okay. Exteriors, really easy. Yeah, you just really, turn yeah, up yeah. outside somewhere. Getting inside a bank to photograph it, very difficult. Of course. Um, but maybe you can find a security company who will let you fo photograph and install. Or maybe you can find a, a door fitting company. Or a, like, there's always a way where they'll be able to go, can we have this person come inside this jewellers to take photographs of it so we can show our stuff being installed and installed or whatever it may be, so you yeah, can find yeah. your way into these interesting places. Um, sports stadiums, they always need photographs because they're all owned by shareholders. And like the, the annual report that goes out to shareholders, it's just a booklet. Seems really like innocent and like very unimportant, but people will decide whether to keep or ditch their shares based on like what's going on what's in going it. On, and yeah. they spend months putting it together. When I did portraits, so I used to get paid all the time, like an extortionate amount just to go to different offices and photograph people to be put inside the annual report. Okay. So it's so important. They'd want pictures of the building in there, pictures of like their new tractors they'd bought or the new fleet of lorries they bought. So they can show people they don't just want a rubbish photograph and average, they want a perfect photograph because these shareholders are worth millions to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why not spend 10 grand on a photograph when it's going to pay all that money back? Yeah. Whereas for these real estate people, why pay more than a hundred pounds? Why pay more than yeah. 200 pounds? Like, there's yeah. no, they're not going to get any more money for it. The house is going to sell. Like it's, it's going yeah. to sell, like all houses sell. So why spend more? Whereas finding these people who are more, I don't think educated is the right word, but like they're more, there's more of a return in investment for them. That would make more sense. Yeah, they see the value of it. Yeah. Or of the photo rather than like they just want yeah. a photo just to show people. Kind yeah, of thing. I think there's two types of value they see. One is the creative value. And that is not just having someone who can come in and basically scan a room with a camera and go, there's what it looks like. Yeah. They see that like, they're able to put a certain like, vision together for it. What they choose to put in the frame and out of the frame is very important. And then obviously there's the return on investment. So like, we spend 10 grand here, we make 10 million there. That's a no brainer. Of course, like, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So off camera, I've just shown Gary a quick example of some images that would work in adverts. Um, I can't share the one here because I have to pay usage and doesn't quite make sense on the old YouTube to do that. So the images we looked at were like the things you perhaps wouldn't assume would be adverts, like something that you could easily go and shoot tomorrow by yeah, yourself yeah. without any real Reason issues. To do it, yeah. So if we assume a day rate of 1200, which is sort of like the, the mid range day rate for commercial work, and we'll assume that adverts running for two years because that's sort of like the lowest people pay for it. And if we assume they're doing it for print and digital, because most people just go for all of that because it's almost, it's not much more expensive to do that. And then we'll go for Europe only. And then 
we will get, so you would make 21,600 plus your 1,200 plus expenses. Plus when you're working commercially, you get paid say 500 pounds a day for digital capture, which is capturing the images. You'll okay. get paid for your travel, you'll get paid for your camera kit, you rent that out as well. So you'll probably be looking at around 30 grand to take those pictures I just showed you. Yeah, yeah. Because they're applied to a different area. They're no better than yours. They're no more difficult. If anything, those ones, particular ones are more simple than yours. But it's the application and knowing that those images are the right images. Okay. So a lot of it is not how good you are as a photographer, it's how good you are at knowing what to shoot. Yeah. So knowing yeah, yeah. what it is to shoot. And then also, once you know what to shoot, it's shooting enough things in a similar vein. So my food work, for example, is very much all the same. When people see it, they go, that's Scott's style of work. Rather, rather than just like, I can do this, I can do that, I've got a bit of this, I've got a bit of that. It's like, here's my perspective on the world applied to food. Here's right, my perspective. Right, and now yeah. I'm going, here's my perspective on the world applied to still life. So my still life work is starting to look very similar to my food work, but it's the same style. Yeah, it's that yeah. same aesthetic and that same like purpose and what I choose to photograph my personal work is very concise and it's very much like I'm choosing to do this because this is commercially viable. I'm choosing to photograph this object instead of that object because this one will work. Right. Like, and that's a lot of what it comes down to, rather than like how technically skilled you are, which is important. Yeah, yeah. But as important, if not more, is knowing what to put in front of the camera. I think that's the crossroads I'm, I'm kind of at now, which is why I've kind of hit the ceiling of, of how much I, I can earn and how, yeah. compared to how much I want to earn, because I've focused so much on um, getting the quality of work to the standard of the people I want to work for, that, and then realizing now they're not, actually said not going to pay more because it's going to sell anyway yeah absolutely so I, I think like if i was in your shoes what i'd go away and do now is one create a new body of work yeah like two carry on doing everything you're currently doing so you want to do extra work on the side now so yeah your your future photography business is now your side hustle so you've got your job now which is doing what you're doing right yeah. and on the side you're building up this new business and that's a good way to put it and um, yeah and it's an easier way to like go right because i did this and i was a portrait photographer so i don't want to do portraits anymore yeah, yeah but i can't just stop because i need to make money so i carried on doing portraits and started building my food business on the side um until one day i went right that's it it makes enough money now we can sack this one off and carry on um, you then need to start looking at ad campaigns and try and find ad campaigns where they're using interiors or exterior photographs and go, oh, do you know what? My image could be there. I can do that. What, what is it that's there? Like just start a massive, get a notebook and your notebook is everything you think about for this sort of stuff. Just write it straight down. Because when you're doing it as a side hustle, you can't keep it in your head because you've got to go and do your day job. Yeah, right. Okay. So you write it all down, keep it all there and just start building and building on that. And once you've got a body of work together, say 20 images, then you need to start pushing that out to ad agencies sending it to creative directors going, hey, just to introduce myself, I specialise in photographing interiors and exteriors in this style, whatever style you choose to do. Right. Here's my portfolio. And that's like the start to moving forward into that world. It'll probably take about six to nine months to get from where you are now to having that amount of work. You don't have loads of time. You've got like a day to two days a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because you've already got the skills, it's just applying it to something else. Yeah, right. And then, and the, then finding the time and choosing what I need to go shoot and absolutely. everything else. Carefully planning the time, making sure you get as much out of it as possible. And whenever you shoot, never just shoot an image, always shoot a series. So on my website, I've just organised my portfolio by series. So the first lot is like four pictures of food and a fork. So instead of just one image, it's four images of the same project, yeah. but with different things. Then I've got five images of individual portraits of sweets. Different photographs, different lighting, and different, but it's, it works together. Then we've got a project and school dinners. Then we've got a project and food being art. Then we've got some images of hero shots of food looking really heroic. So it's like everything's got a project behind it. Okay. And so it might be like, right, today we're photographing the use of car parks in the community. So it might be like, you've got to find car parks in a hundred mile radius where you can take a shot of the car park and in the background, you can have a community building of some sort, whether it's hospitals in the background of okay. every car park or yeah, yeah, yeah. community centres in the background of every car park, whatever it is where you can then go to NCP, we can do this great advert where we can go, look, this is how NCP car parks help the NHS. 
this is how NCP car parks help okay. the elderly or whatever it is. Like there's yeah, that yeah, context. Yeah, yeah. And it's just trying to like, whatever, it doesn't have to be that literal one. They're never going to buy an advert like that from you, but it's good to show that you have an understanding of like, this is what, what like, here's want. my project yeah. on how car parks help the community. Here's my projects right. on how parks help the elderly. And you're still doing interior or, I know you don't actually do exterior photography, but start doing it if you want to, like yeah, or exterior yeah. photography. It's something I, I want to do Yeah, as well. and then it's just applying it to different things. The council might need a project shooting on parks. Actually, right. thinking about it now, I actually went around my area um, just before COVID actually and was taking pictures of like the buildings in my area. And then I think I actually did email my local council uh, a few times, at the, got nothing back. But yeah, it's to, a lot of it, you need to find someone who knows someone in the council. There's a lot of networking involved. Yeah, yeah. Getting on LinkedIn, I hate LinkedIn, uh, but I use it loads nowadays to, to link to art buyers and creative directors because it's the best way because they're always looking okay. for the next job. Yeah, so they're always yeah. on there. So I always go there and sort of like just building small connections and things like that. Yeah, what, would you post photos on there? I do, yeah, uh, I use my LinkedIn like Instagram. Oh, okay. Like, it's very okay. much the same, like put a poster up, put a link to my blog post, or whatever it is. Right. And because it's very much like another professional dashboard, I guess. It's another way okay. to get people to see your work. Yeah, yeah. Follow all the right people, follow all the architects, interior designers, all the people who work in these companies, especially the junior ones. Because they're junior now, whilst you're starting out, by the time you're at a higher level, they'll also be at a senior level. They'll be at, so yeah, like, just because someone's be in a junior position, maker. don't like... Uh, write them right. off because often yeah. they are the person you want to talk to in the future so yeah just I, I think like I do just like go straight to the person sort of in charge who kind of tries who can make those decisions yeah to, I, know the, I think sometimes me. you've got to be on the peripheral for a while first yeah and like play the long game yeah absolutely absolutely awesome do you have any questions no I, I think that um I mean as I said I've sort of tried to do the the project thing I think you've explained everything pretty pretty clearly and I sort of have a much better understanding of what I'll need to do to get into that next that next level. Nice one. Look forward to seeing the work when you do. So when you do start doing your projects, do send them through to me. Yeah, like yeah. Ping them over yeah, an email. Yeah, yeah. Now you're getting on, and it'd be good to see where you're in like a year's time to sort of like yeah. see if it's worked. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully I'll say I only shot twice this 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 month, but I'm done for the year. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Nice one. Thank you very much for coming along. No problem. Thank you. There you go. So that, that's Gary's situation. That's the advice I've offered to him. Um, whether he does it or not, I don't know. If you want to see what it looks like in six months' time, I think it would be great to hear back from him to see exactly what he managed to do, what he failed to do, and what went well, what didn't go well. You know, there's, the photography business is a hard one. You can't just go, I'm going to be a photographer, and it happened. There's a lot of work that goes into that. So hopefully this has helped sort of show him what's available, what's out there, just to think as a bit of a, a more big world picture of it. If you want to see more videos about the world of commercial photography, do hit subscribe. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.